Hello everybody, welcome to the United Stands. I'm Mark Goldbridge and I'm joined by Ben Foster for the Monday Meltdown, I suppose it could be. How are you doing? Yeah, good, thanks mate, you? Yeah, well, you know, actually, I feel, um, well, let's get straight into it. I feel like with the, the Man City game, it's almost like there's, a, there's an element of overreaction. I mean, I didn't get anything out of that game that I didn't think I was going to get. I'd said 2-0. Uh, some people were saying 7 or 8-0. Mm. You know, I thought defensively United played well. But again, the attacking four let us down. But I think the bigger picture is way off. Man United way off. What, what are your thoughts on that? Because I'm, I'm seeing stuff this morning and I'm like, you know, for me, Manchester City have spent a billion or over a billion well for a yeah. decade. Yeah. And United have spent a billion badly for a decade. Yeah. And you see a game like that and people are talking about style of play, substitutes. And I'm like, mate, hey, hey. in a game like that, that's not about... Fulham last week, yeah. The Derby... That's just an excellently run club for, for a decade compared to a bad run club. And you're not going to solve that in, you know, a week or what. No, I totally agree. It's, um, it's all of the above. It's like what you say there. Um, the golfing class was just, it was just so evident to see, wasn't it? I know, I know United scored an early goal and um, it, it's always nice to score an early goal. It gives you something a little bit more to sort of defend and look after. Um, but Man City do this week in, week out. They, you know, there's so many times, I think they've got... 20 points or 21 points or something from losing positions so far this season. And that's because teams know that the only chance they've got of getting anything against Man City is if they strike early. Mm. Um, so they've got to give it everything they can and then pray to God they can hold on. But nobody really ever gets to hold on because Man City just keep doing it, keep doing it, keep doing it relentlessly, overworking everybody, overplaying everybody. And eventually somebody's going to switch off and that's all it takes is that split second and Man City will exploit it. They are, they're just... They're, they're phenomenal to watch, aren't they? Where did you think it went wrong for United, just before we talk about the bigger picture? Because defensively, I thought, uh, I even thought the cup goal he did well, probably should have saved Foden's second one, to be fair, but I thought he did overall quite well, relieved the pressure at times, especially balls into the mm. box. I thought Varane and Evans were brilliant. Yep. Delo played well. Lindelof, no, not really at left back. Casemiro, Mainu did well. I think defensively they were well structured, but I, I think the first 20 minutes they had the goal from Rashford. He was through one on one. I think he should have done better there. And then there was one on the back post. And then and after that, we stopped. You're never going to create loads of chances, but they wasted so much of the ball. And it was just relentless second half pressure. Relentless. That's it. I think, um, I think when you set up to play sort of defensively, which Man, Man United did, I think that's easier to do. I, I, I respect the fact that they defended well and they worked hard. Um, but it's easier to do because you're all on the same page. You already know that that's what you're, you're going to do. Together. Yeah, the fact that you are you don't start with a recognised centre-forward, and they didn't really play with a centre-forward, did they? Um, I think that sends a message straight away from the get-go that, lads, if we can nick something here and hold on, cling on for dear life, then please, let's just try and do that. Mm -hmm. um, there was no chance of Man United winning that game. I think after, after the match, Ten Hag said, um, you know, we we could have won it, we possibly could have won the game. And I'm thinking, no, there's no chance on this earth. You've just been outplayed, completely outplayed. Uh, Man City toyed with you at times, 73, 4% possession, um, restricted Man United to the one single solitary shot on target. Do you think that's a problem, though? Because i uh, just going to throw in some of the things that people have said. Um, oh, it's embarrassing, 18% possession at the Etihad. Do you think that's embarrassing in relation to where Man United are as a football club at the moment compared to where Man City are? Because... I, 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 I completely agree that Man City were the better team, but I don't actually get the hype of, oh, it's embarrassing. Mm. That's, I mean, I've seen people talking about style of play and tactics, and I'm like, no, said it in the preview on Friday, he got it absolutely spot on. Yeah. I, I, would, I, I would have took Bruno out the midfield three and used him as a winger or a false nine to put McTominay in there with, with Maynard and Casemiro and play compact. I think anything else, it could have been seven. Or yeah, it could have been. It could have been seven, or it would have been silly. It would have been absolutely silly. Um, I don't think it's embarrassing, the, the stats. I think if you'd have asked most sensible people before the game how this game would go, it played out pretty much like yeah, that, yeah, didn't yeah. it? You know, yeah, the yeah. scoreline, um, the way that Man City just toyed with United, um, even with regards to possession. I think most people would say Man City would have about 70-odd percent possession, maybe a bit more. Mm. Um, and they probably do that to most teams at the Etihad. And if Man United would have had a different style of play today, a bit more up top, a bit more, come on lads, let's throw a bit of caution to the wind and go for it today. They would have got battered. They would have got mm. absolutely battered. And that's just where they are. Man United can't compete with Man City. So regardless of what they'd have done today, 
Um, it's almost like, you know, when you played Champ Man back in the day and if you lose like a really important game, you'd be like, I've oh, saved it before, so I'll just restart it again yeah, and do yeah. it. Yeah? You can't resave that you could You could have restarted that game about 50 times before yeah. you actually get a result from it. Like, it just wouldn't have come. It wouldn't have come. No, I agree. And uh, I think as well, it's uh, it, it sort of leads into what I was saying at the start there. I just, th- I just think that th- this... this um, this hype reaction from some fans and, and, and people in the media just doesn't help. I mean, for me, it was a free hit. And also, I think that there is a bigger picture to be had, but the danger is always that people will start looking at the manager mm. because I, I look at that and I go, well, there were occasions in the second half, there were occasions in the first half where the, you defended well, you get that ball into a Bruno or a Ganacho or a Rashford and they instantly give it back. Yeah. And as a defender and a goalkeeper, that must be massively frustrating because yeah. it's, it's just coming back again, isn't it? There was never any, especially in the second half, there was never, and we did it against Fulham and we did it against Forest. the front four are so careless with mm. the ball. Um, I don't care what, you know, bring Thomas Tuchel in, bring De Zerbe in, bring Pep in. He ain't going to use those players because no. they're not going to, they can't become Phil Foden, Kevin De Bruyne, yeah. Martin Odegaard, Saka, Madison, they can't become those players. No, they, they don't want to keep the ball. They don't know how to keep. They the don't ball. know how to keep the ball. They're not shielders of the ball. They're not somebody who's going to get around it, stick their bum in, and go right, lads, get round me, and we'll play you in. They want the ball at their feet, and they want to be dribbling with it, and they want to run with it. They don't want to play ones and twos and all this nice stuff because they're, they're, at the end of the day, they're a bit selfish. All yeah. of those players that you just mentioned there, they're all a bit selfish, um, and it's not a good mix. You look at Man City. I, I reckon that if if any one of them Man City players would have done too much with the ball, dribbling with it, and they'd have lost it. Pep would have gone wild at them, absolutely mm. wild, barking at them, and they'd know not to do it again. Um, and that's that's just the difference. Man City know that they play as a team unit, and Man Man United, as usual, have just got too many individuals. I was listening to Skulls afterwards, and he said that Ineos have already made their decision, they'll get rid of him. Um, obviously very negative, obviously. Um, as a United fan, it's not great, especially when you're you know, a player that's from that area, losing to your rivals. But what what do you think about United now um, and the team and the rest of the season? Because there's two trains of thoughts. I mean, I, I just always look at it and I'm like, who are you bringing in anyway? Yeah. Like, there's just yeah. a lot of this. It's almost like a movement without a solution. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I really don't know. I'd say that if Scolzi's saying that, though, it's probably true. Mm. Um, that's probably how it's going to play out. Um, but it's... I don't, I don't know who you're going to get. I really don't know who you're going to get this... There's a few top managers in the world. Um, Liverpool have got one of them. They're, they're going to start the search for them. They're, they're probably higher in the pecking order than Man United, so they'll get the next best Yeah, one. yeah, yeah. Buy me. Um, you've got Pep Guardiola, probably the best manager in the world, and then pff, the rest are OK managers, good managers. Um, and I don't, know if, I don't know if anybody's going to be able to come in and take hold of that squad and, and change it quickly. And there's a lot of people that say as well that they're three, four years behind Man City and that's if Man City just sits still, stand oh, still. Yeah. And Man City ain't standing still. Why would they? It's not like they're going to go, well, well done, lads, we've had a good run, but um, Man United are coming now in three or four years, so just chill till then and let them take over. Absolutely no chance. They are, they're probably ahead of Man United in every aspect of everything. Transfer dealings, managers, future this, future that. They've got their finger on the pulses and Man United have missed the trick. Yeah, and I think as well when you when you look at it with the with the managerial situation, it's uh, you know I I expect better of people, especially ex players who are just like oh it's not going well. I think we need to move it. And I I I, I personally think they're doing it because they just don't like Ten Hag. I don't think they're yeah. doing it for the betterment of Man United. You were talking about uh, Dan uh, Ashworth and to David Brailsford, and look if they don't listen to fans, then what are they like? They're the vast majority of United fans still don't put the blame on the manager, yeah. they put it on the players. Uh-huh. And a new manager, as you said last week, is going to come in and want to give everyone a chance. Mm. Well, to- I don't rate Thomas Tuchel. I think De Zerbe's overrated. Um, Nagelsmann is interesting. But, you know, you- it just feels to me like if we get rid of the manager, we're heading down the same path as the Glazers where we need a manager to get the best out of Rashford and Bruno. You know, and, and that's that's how it comes across all the time. You know, that interview we did on Friday... You know what was the what was the statement? It, it, what was the big line? It, it was um, doubt me, by all means doubt. I, I can't remember what it was, but ultimately yeah, it didn't work. No, it's, you know one goal in a Manchester derby and then a poor performance. Like I, I'm just terrified that everybody's focusing on the manager again when actually a new manager will just be like Mourinho, like yeah, Van yeah, Hal, yeah, like yeah. Oli, like Ten Hag. Get the best out of the players that you've got, and they're quite clearly. If you watch the game yesterday. That front four never keep hold of the ball. Nope. 
and you could put Marcus Albrighton up front there, Ollie Watkins, <laughs> and they would keep hold of the ball better. So, so what are we doing? Who are these players? Oh, but on their day, they're brilliant, but they can't hold the fucking ball up. They can't keep the ball. Yeah, there was a time in the first half where Bruno gets it, Ganacho's running down the left, Rashford's got three Man City players, and has ran offside, and Bruno still tries to find him, and you're like, give him the ball to Ganacho, and it's like. They want that Hollywood pass all the time. They're not thinking about possession. It's, um, I know, mate. I'm with you. It's a painful watch. I think just going back to the the, the new ownership and Brailsford and Barada and Dan Ashworth, and um, I think they're going to do a, gr a great job. I really do. I think the future is bright for them. Whether they're going to get back to winning, 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 I'm not sure. But they will. They Managers will. So important. They, they, it, without doubt, it is. Yeah. But I think the the manager can only do so much with with certain players, you know. I think, um, again, I, I said it all season, Man City will outwork you. Man City will outwork you. Why? Why will they outwork you? Why? Because that's what they do. That's what's expected of them. The minimum is outworking teams, yeah? Like, it's, not, it's not just, you, you'll know this, it's not just work, is it? It's work, outworking someone is keeping the ball. Yeah, oh, everything. Having the it's ability everything. to keep the yeah. ball. Like, it's it's, it's high not just running. It's everything. It's, high, it's clever. It's clever everything. Clever running, clever high intensity, doing it in the right places, knowing when to press and knowing when to push and knowing when to sit off. Doing it in the right places. I, get, I still get the impression with Man United that sometimes they just sort of off the cuff. Everything's off the cuff. I'm sure with the front three, four that they just they get told to just go and do it. Go on, go and do it. Whereas the Man City lads, it's like, no, you do it, this way. Do it when we get the ball and we're in a certain area. That's when we go. You go there. There are triggers for it. Go, go, go. They don't get left to just go at their own pace and their own devices. Um, and that's why they're a team and that's why they win. And But like I say, Man City outwork teams because that's what's expected of them. They, they don't get to slip their standards. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I just think that, you know, I may as well just say it. I just think that we're going down this pathway of who's going to be the manager and the press are doing it. I was doing a show on the United Stand, on, on this channel, the mm. United Stand, on Friday, and I was like, I don't want to talk about the manager anymore because every outlet, every morning, it's Tuchel, it's De Zerbi, it's this, it's that. And I'm like, that's, I don't see that's the problem. I think that, you know, we're into March now and we should be looking at where we are with players. Well, 11 games left, right? 11 games left, United. Um... 44 points, six off Tottenham. Um, 11 off. 11 off Villa in fourth. So, <coughs> how many? Who's behind? Is it? West Ham are two points behind. <laughs> two points behind West Ham are. Um, Newcastle are four points behind. Um, but yeah, that's that's about right though. Yeah, yeah no, I think it's about right. The best, do you, do you remember? Team. Do you remember like a few weeks ago before the Fulham game? I said to you, I said it was. The, I think they played, they played Luton. I said they give up so many chances, so many chances, and there's uh, there's better teams that are going to take them chances. You know, mm. you can't do that in the Premier League. You can't give well, that Everton many chances. Tough on you, you can't give that many chances up and expect to win games like consistently. That's why they're so inconsistent. They're they're hitting miss up top and then they're hitting miss at the back as well. So are you starting to say now you don't think Ten Hag's here in the summer. Um, I would say that if Scholes has come out and said that, then he's he's got his um, ear to the ground. He'll he'll have heard something. He'll have known something for sure. You already think that? Yeah. That's how it works. Yeah, yeah. Doesn't it doesn't come across like he does that. No, he does. It does. Like I say, them, them big boys, them them players, sort of, they will know. They will know certain stuff. They'll get told stuff from people that are still within the club, and that it terrifies me. It yeah. terrifies that 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 terrifies me about Ineos because they're not listening to the fans and if they're listening to the likes of Skulls and Neville and stuff I'm sorry there, there, there has to be a, there has to be an element though when the new ownership comes in of yes listen to the fans but also it hasn't worked for the last 11 years since Alex Ferguson left it hasn't worked has it so you can you can say yeah we we want we need to listen to the fans but at some point we also have to get the guys in the expertise the the guys that have done it before in different fields and said Right, let's try and do it this way then. But do you not, I mean, I, my, my point is, and there'll be a lot of people loving what you're saying there because they want a change and that's what it's all about. But, you know, I have to reaffirm my point. He's got the best win ratio after 100 games than yeah. any Man United manager. He's also missing very key players mm. that when they're back, we play a lot better. I'm terrified that we sack Ten Hag. I mean, a lot of us regret sacking Mourinho because mm. it was player power. You sack Ten Hag, you bring in Tuchel or someone like that, who I, I just, I don't, you know, like on a scales, yeah. I'm like, you sack Ten Hag and you bring Ten, oh, it's the same. Yeah. You're going to spend all that. You know, if you sack Ten Hag and you bring Ancelotti in, let's play ball, you know, I'll do that. But I just don't see sack Ten Hag. I mean, there's talk of Graham Potter because he used to work with Ashworth. De Zerbi, fucking no. I mean, Nagelsmann is uh, interesting, but I think Nagelsmann reminds me a lot of Ten Hag from Ajax. It's like, you know, I just, I don't, 
all I hear is sack the manager because and people are very passionate about it, but I don't see the the up upward turn. Mm. And also, I don't. I was going to ask you about this. I don't like the idea of a, um, a director of football and a CEO um, running transfers and putting a manager in the place just to coach players. <laughs> Where where has that ever worked? Yeah, Pep but, doesn't do that. But, Pop doesn't do yeah, that. But, Arteta doesn't do that. Again, going back to United, it hasn't worked for eleven years for Man United, and you, they've outspent everybody. And who who have they got to show for it? The the, the young ones, Ganacho came through the youth team. Um, Manu came through the youth team. Hoyland, yeah, he's, he's doing well. He's doing well. But who else have they spent crazy money on? Bruno, he's been a bit of a success. We can't deny that. But nobody else really is there. There isn't anybody. So if you're looking that they've spent more money than anybody else and it hasn't worked the way that the, the club's transfer policy works, then at some point somebody in that higher echelons of the club has to say, right, we might have to do it a different way then. I think sacking the manager is a massive call and a massive risk. And my balance to that, just so I'm just, I don't, I don't, I don't want to be the guy who's sat there going, everything's fine. My balance to that is if some people want to sack Ten Hag and, and go down that massive risk of, you know, he's bringing young players through, he's got injuries, etc. I would say if it's sacking Ten Hag, my alternative is sell Bruno, sell Rashford, get in a proper number 10. Yeah, a do it a bit winger. differently. Yeah. I, you know, if I have a choice between selling Bruno and Rashford, which I actually don't want to do, or sacking Ten Hag, there you go. There's your, there's your piece. <laughs> If it's sack Ten Hag or it's sell Bruno and Rashford, right here, right now, I'm selling Bruno and Rashford. Something's going to happen. Something's going to happen. That, that, that to me is more important because those two players, who I like, have been here for years yeah. under numerous managers and I've seen it time and time again against the Liverpools and the Arsenals and the Man Cities, Ben. They don't shine. Nope. They don't shine like, and they're our big players. So I think, get rid of that, build something new. Um, it'll be interesting to see what happens come the end you of the season. You won't commit. I don't, won't. Because I don't know the best way. I really don't know the best way. This is why the big boys get paid the big bucks, like the new owners, the new chief execs, all that kind of stuff, because it's going to be interesting to see the way that they want to do it. You know, the, Like I say, but you don't just get a new owner come in and spend one and a half billion no. and just go, well, just let it carry on the way it's going then. It's fine. No, he's coming for a reason. He's coming to want to really change things and bring Manchester United back to the best. So... Whatever he decides to do is going to be the way that he's going to do it. He's not going to pander to people. Do you think United, with Bruno and Rashford for the next three years, will challenge for the title? Um, do you think they're the sort uh, of uh, Amongst other really, really top players, amongst world-class players. Oh, yeah, players, they yeah. drop to be yeah. the third or fourth best uh, um, player. Amongst yeah. world-class yeah. players, for they're sure. they're the focal points. Yeah, no, you, that's not going to be challenging Man City or Liverpool or Arsenal. It's just not, is it? It's, it's, no, they, that's what they're good yeah. players. Yeah. You know, we've seen good players in our lifetime, you know. Matt Letitia was a good player. He was never going to sign for fucking no, Man United and make no. them beat Chelsea's Mourinho. Well, no, he wasn't playing then, but you know what I mean. Arsenal or whoever. Um, I just don't think Bruno and Rashford are good enough to be the focal points of these teams. They both started yesterday and Man City wiped their arse. I know. You've got you to still remind yourself sometimes though, that you're talking about Man City. You're talking about Man but that, City. But that's what I mean. Yeah. That's, that, that's the level. But that's the top level. Yeah. That's the top in the world. Yeah, you but know if, what you mean? Put, if you put Ronaldo and Messi in that team yesterday at their best... At Man City? At Man United. Oh, yeah. Instead of Rashford and Bruno. Um, you put... All right. I'd that, still that, fancy ridiculous. Man City to win. All right. If I put if I put Saka and... Who's a really good number 10 that doesn't play for Man City? They do seem to be a bit <laughs> locked up. If I put Bellingham and Saka in that United team yesterday instead yeah. of Bruno and Rashford... Oh, they're still not touching Man City. Oh, they will. No, they, they bloody won't. will. Are you mad? They will, of course no, they will. Can. Of course they, they'll be, they will, because they, they'll be better on the on the attack. They would be better, but it would still it would raise it a little bit for sure. But Man City would still be going, yeah, that's fine. But oh, you yeah, can, Man City still On the win. rare occasion you have the ball, you might be a little bit more of a Man threat, City but. still win, because they're a brilliant <laughs> team. But if you put Saka and Bellingham instead of Bruno and Rashford... It would improve you. are more yes. of a threat. Yeah, for sure, I agree. And it was 3-1, agree. and Amrabat's a prat. So, you know, we probably do win that game 3-1. <laughs> yeah, but uh, Man City had like eight shots on to, uh, like nine shots on goal yesterday, I think. So you know they, like I say, they're always going to they're always going to score about a third of their goals. Man City. It's I know, the way that what it goes. I'm saying is that our two <laughs> best players are Rashford and Bruno, and if you replace them with Bellingham and Saka, we're a better team. Uh, that happens. To work that with. happens for every other team in the league apart from maybe Arsenal, Liverpool, and Man City. Yeah, they need to move on. <laughs> they need to. They need to. Ineos need to be looking at that. They need to be speaking to those two players and saying you're going to be a bit part or you can go. Okay. We can't build the team It'll around. It'll be interesting to see. I'm tired of watching it. So Jim Ratcliffe ain't messing about, mate. 
well, he is messing about if he gets another manager in and says, see what you can do with Rashford and Bruno. <laughs> and I'm not saying sell those two players, by the way. I'm just saying they can't be the focal point. They've been found out time and time again, season after yeah. season, against the Liverpools and the Man Cities. People like Foden and everything are going, you're having a laugh. Uh, this again, like I just can we quickly just touch on this thing as well. Um, like go back to the starting lineup for Man Man United and their formation that they played. Like Haaland, I know he scored la like a last minute goal and he had a couple of chances, but him playing as a big focal point centre forward takes the sort of eyes off the other players around him. You know, the the Fodens, the Dokus. The, that's what gets them the chances is because people yeah, yeah. think don't let Haaland have a sniff, don't give him a, a second because you know he's going to score. Um, and then that's why all these that's why Phil Foden's profiting so much at the minute and all the other players are profiting because the, the kind of the pressure's off them, the eyes are off them because they almost like have to double up on Haaland. There's always a spare little bit of space or pocket for, for a Phil Foden to go and exploit. Well let's not forget as well, De Bruyne started, Bernardo oh. Silva started, Doku started, I mean? Haaland, yeah. Foden, Rodri. Rodri. I mean that front six is just best scary. six in the world. Yeah. Um, get your comments in below. Lots to talk about. Thank you very much for coming on, Ben. Pleasure. See you on the next one. See you next week.